Hi, it's time for Marine Shorts, and today I want to show you simple ways that you can modify the two bucket worm composter and the two tote worm composter for high heat situations. These are to answer comments I had from Emily, Ken, and Rick, all who were concerned about how their worms were going to react to heat. So stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the green shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. If you're curious about the sunglasses, they're on to protect you because I've got pink eye and folks, it ain't pretty. Pink eye also doesn't really fit with the green shorts brand. Speaking of brand, let me address a comment that I got from Sarcasma57. He said, great video, but your pants are brown. Good point, Sarcasmo, and I expect a comment like that from someone with your screen name. By the way, loved your video about how fire ravaged your match maze. Pretty creative. Sarcasmo, I wanted to show you that indeed I do have green shorts. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get on with this video. So there are three things that can help address heat when it comes to our worm bins. Increasing airflow, maintaining moisture, and of course keeping it out of the sun. That's the big one. I actually made a mistake one time of, as I was taking a worm bin to some friends, I left the worm bin in the car for about an hour, thinking, oh, It'll be okay. The compost is cool enough. It'll maintain that temperature. Nope. They were baked. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Worms can die very quickly in high heat situations. One simple way to keep a worm bin cool is to add a little more water than normal. Just as temperatures rise, you're going to put some more water in and then it'll help with evaporative cooling. But to do that, we also need to help with increasing airflow as well. Both of these systems, the top bin um, fits pretty tightly down into the bottom bin. So what we need to do to aid airflow is basically raise the top bin up, allow air to travel down the side into the worm bin and then back up through it. But in addition to creating an air gap on the side, we also need to make a path for the air to move through the compost more efficiently. So we'll be scraping the compost back a little bit to reveal a few holes in the bottom and that's going to allow the air to move through bringing the cool air from the bottom bin up into the top bin letting the hot air escape out the top through our screened holes. The simplest way to do that is to use a brick in the case of this worm bin, I don't think a brick's tall enough, but in the bucket, the two bucket worm bin, just setting a brick in your bottom bucket and letting the top bucket rest on top of that brick is going to create that air gap. By the way, it's night here, and it was dark when I got this thing from outside, so I left some newspaper on top because I wanted you to see how these guys work at night here. Let's see how they're... Coming up the sides, night crawling. That's why they're called night crawlers. So as soon as they see the light, they're gonna flee. All right, let's put this lid back on. So we're simply taking our top bucket out, setting a brick down in our warm tea in the bottom, our leachate and then putting the bucket back on the top. And that gives us a little bit of an air gap around the side. So once I've created my air pathways along the, the sides of the buckets, I need to make a path through the compost for the air to move up from the bottom bucket through the top bucket. To do that, I'm going to pull back the compost and then put in this piece of scrap PVC. That's gonna allow that air channel to remain open. All right, so I've got my glove on here. So I'm gonna dig down through the compost here. Ooh, soldier flies, yeah. 
So this guy's been outside, so you can see I've got soldier fly larvae in there too. I'm going to have to separate those guys out eventually. So once I'm down to my bottom layer here on the screen, move in on that so you can see it. You can see a hole right there, and there's another one right there too. So I'm going to put my pipe in over those holes and kind of backfill it with some of the compost. So that's kind of gave us a little chimney effect there. There's a soldier fly mama right there. If you haven't seen what a soldier fly looks like, the adult form that is, here's one right here. She looks like a small wasp, but when they fly they kind of flit around. Anyway, that's for another video. But while we had her in our sights there. Alright, so it's as simple as that. Let's jump over to the tube bin system and I'll show you how I'm going to handle that. For the tube bin system, to create my air gap, I'm going to use a couple of half inch dowels that I've cut to about six inches long and slide them down between the sides here. It's actually a bump out on the side of the bin. If you can get the dowel to sit over that, then it really helps it keep the separation. So there we get a nice air gap along the side there. And then we're going to repeat our chimney trick on the inside. But I'm actually going to use two this time. Because our bin is bigger, we get more air volume to move. But it's also a little more shallow, so my PVC pieces don't have to be as tall. Got some pepper seedlings growing here. Keep those. This is some good castings right here. Look at that. That is ready right there to go in the garden. Alright, so I'm just gonna dig down in here, being gentle because I got worms. Got my uh, divider in there. Get it out of the way. So I'm down to some holes there in the the bin. Now I'm going to just place my chimneys in this three inch piece. I'm going to try and sit over three holes. Get some good airflow going there and then this one I can get two with. I'm just going to put some of the compost back around it to some of the bedding to hold them in place. Alright, now we've got our airflow chimneys in place. Alright, so there's one more trick I want to give you in the case of an extreme heat wave. And that is ice. Now, you know that bag of ice that's half used in the cooler at the end of your cookout? Well, I put mine in my freezer because it not only makes my freezer more efficient by taking up space with a solid versus air that just flows right out when I open the freezer door, but I can use this ice in the next cooler run for the cookout, or in the case of my worm bin needing some cooling, I can use the ice for that. Now this is one big solid hunk right now, so what I'm gonna do is slam it on the concrete floor and break it up. Now what you don't want to do is spread the ice all around the worm bin. What you want to do is create a cool zone. So take a hunk about this big and you're just going to maybe pull back the bedding a little bit. Although you know what, you don't want to really drop it down right on top of some worms. So an area where you don't see worms and then just put it in there and set it in place. And what the worms are going to be able to do is they will sense the cool and they'll migrate toward it to regulate their temperature. So rather than sprinkling around, cooling down the whole worm bin, you're going to create a cool zone. They'll move toward it to a point at which they get happy. So obviously this is going to melt probably in the course of a day. 
in doing so, it's going to get you across that 100 degree chunk of time when your worm should really be in distress. All right, so there's a few tips to help you condition your worm bin for hot weather. Emily, Ken, and Rick, I hope this helps you out. Along with the others of you that are watching all of these worm bin videos I've been making lately. To prove that I'm not a one-trick pony, I've got some other new videos coming up soon. Here at Green Shorts DIY, we make new videos every Friday, even when we have pink eye. In fact, the series i got coming up I think you might find interesting as well. It's about rocket stoves. Now, there are a lot of rocket stove videos on YouTube. I think they're pretty interesting. But I'm also going to show you three practical things that you can do with a rocket stove. A lot of the videos out there really just burn grilled cheese sandwiches and leave it at that. But I've got three things that I do with my rocket stove that are practical uses that allow me to use the local fuel that I find in my yard, twigs and small branches, instead of using electricity. Stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments below if you have any more questions about worm composting. I'd be happy to answer them or to point you to resources for folks that know more than I do. As always, our mission here at Green Schwartz is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. In this case, you're making your own organic fertilizer out of food scraps from the kitchen instead of paying for an expensive, chemically created, store-bought fertilizer. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for new videos 